What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, John, for the game. Dude here, welcome to you back to some more Dang and Ropa Trigger Happy Havoc Chapter 5 Deadly Life. Let's figure out what Biakia wants, wants to talk to us about because uh, we're investigating the keys to the dojo area to see if those keys correspond. It was number six. There are wooden lockers here. The wood block keys. They're just like super traditional public bath halls. It looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Makoto, do you have? Do you see the lockers furthest to the right? Very strange. That's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. Do you understand what that means, right? I should probably use the key we found at the locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Okay. <clears throat> I took the wood block key and inserted it in the locker's metal lock and click. The locker eagerly accepted the key and it opened. There are arrows in here. It looks like 10 arrows in total. <laughs> they look like they're made of titanium, which means they're quite strong despite how thin they are. Of course, without a bow, there's nothing but strong little sticks. Strong sticks. Titanium arrows have been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Oh, there's something else inside the locker. That's what I was looking at. It's a wadded up ball of duct tape. I wonder what it was used for. Is that a blood stain? If it is, it means that surely it's related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow, but how could it possibly be involved? Bloody duct tape has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. I think it's all the locker has to offer for now. Something Very wrong. strange. Very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. But how did the key to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... Biakia? Hmm. Forget it. Come on. We need to continue to the next location. Huh? What's the next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to find... Do more research on Fenir. Fenir? You mean the mercenary group that uh, Makuro is a part of? Or Mukuro is a part of? But how are we supposed to find out about it? Hmm. Isn't it obvious? Where in the school would you go to do research on something? Research? Are you talking about the archive? That's right. The archive has all kinds of info and to the general public doesn't have access Let's to. Let's go. We are the only ones that... Uh, we, we only have so much time before the trial over here. Let's hurry. Hmm. I believe this is the... There was a file located or rel related to Fenir somewhere over here. Biakia seemed to know the archives like the back of his hand. He went straight to the shelf in the hmm. back. Ah, here we go. He quickly returned the file to his hand. I see. Take a look at this. Um, I have no idea what it says, in what language it is. Hmm. How did you uh, make it all the way to, to high school without learning a single word of French? Um, I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. Well, whatever. I'll read it to you, but don't. I, I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. A hundred times. Isn't that kind of extreme? <laughs> Veneer is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlikely military contractors. They are fierce. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who engage in direct combat. They claim to, that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like Veneer, the Wolf of Ragnarok. Their mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. They are involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago, a completely ce they completely ceased all activity. At present, they can their continued existence cannot be confirmed. It is unconfirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that key members of the group are well neutralized. Were all neutralized. Rumors indicate they were killed to keep from revealing many stare secrets they acquired. Somehow, however. Somehow, however, believe that they are mounting internal tension within the group, that and they simply imploded. What? What is it? That all just sounds like some kind of alternate reality. Hmm. Well, isn't it? This is our reality. The only reality. These people are part of our world. The battlefields aren't much different from our lives here. An unpredictable, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it all exciting. Exciting is definitely not the word I would have used there. So... Did anything jump out at you? This may be our last opportunity to learn about the Fenir. Now that you mention it. The report says something about the about where the Fenir comes from, right? <laughs> That's right. It said Fenir. 
is the Wolf of Ragnarok. Speaking of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show they are a member of team, the team, each soldier, soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fen Fenir somewhere on their body. What? They got a tattoo of Fenir. Could that mean Mukuro, I or Mukuro Ikasaba's profile has been updated to the Truth Bullet section of your handbook? Has been updated. Has been updated. Time is utterly silent, and yet it constantly assaults us organisms, the earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. I'm so sorry that I left you guys on the biggest cliffhanger ever with Biakia. So, please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See ya. Also, 18 documents, huh? Then the time has come. All we can do now is uncover the truth during the class trial. Right. It would seem that way, so let's go. So 18 seems to be the running theme. I wonder if that'll carry on into Chapter 6 and into future games. Because I'm definitely, we're definitely going to do future games on the channel as well. So we'll see. Hmm. Well, Byakuya and Makoto showed up together. <sighs> Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. Hmm. We're investigating, of course. How could you not figure out that out by this point? Yeah! Oh, Kodo, ranked high enough for you guys to go off to together? Just the two of you? Huh? What? Are you jealous? Hey. Are you making up some kind of creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking and brace yourself. He'll, he'll be here any second. Any second. He could show up at any time. When I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But we stood there for five full minutes, waiting for something weird to happen. Then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on here? Has it, why hasn't Monokuma shown up yet? Could it be? Maybe he died again. Hmm. What should we do? Should we keep waiting here or? <laughs> Or what? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> did I scare you? Come on. I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait that like mm -hmm. that? What? I made you wait. You've got it all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words. I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. We can't start till everyone's here now, can we? Mm -hmm. What are you t -t talking about? Everyone is here. We've all been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but I've been waiting ten minutes now, so it's okay if I punish that one for making us wait, right? If we agree, it's a violation. I'll arrange the punishment right now. If it's if it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. When I, we heard that voice, we all spun around to look. Hey. I'm here, and no rule has been broken. Kyoko! Uh. Kyoko, you're still alive! Uh. No, 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 that's a g g g ghost. I knew she was alive. She, I knew she ran off somewhere. Like, honestly, like, I, 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 I said, I, I believed full heartedly the mastermind was the one that was dead, or Mukuro Ikasaba was dead. I did not think or deviate that thinking, even though it was being pulled away from it. I feel pretty proud of that. Like, that tattoo, then they were talking about scars. I was like, nope, that's a tattoo. It's not scars. It's like a dog thing. That veneer happened. It was like, it was great. It was like, okay, I don't have to worry about Kyoko anymore. We're down for this. Hmm. If you want to, well, I guess we do have to worry about Kyoko in a way, though, because Kyoko could have killed. But we'll get to that when we get to that. If you want to fight, so do it at the class trial. You'll need to save some fun for later, right? What? But it's okay that there's no particular penalty for being late. Is that right? I just made it here just fine. What school regulation did I violate, Biakia? Am I wrong? <laughs> You're so selfish, so spoiled. You're right. There's no penalty officially, but I will bet you'll be sorry later. Shing! No, I will make sure that you're sorry later. <laughs> anyway, hustle your butts into the elevator. I'll be with one step ahead of you. I'm so happy about Kyoko. I'm way too happy about Kyoko. When Monokuma was gone, we all rushed to the up to Kyoko. Kyoko! Ah! So you really didn't die? Indeed. Of course. Of course I didn't die, silly. <laughs> Thank God, I'm so glad you're okay. 
Perhaps, but that's not necessarily a good thing for us either. Huh? He's right. We gotta deal with the g g g g ghost. Oh my god. I told you stop t talking. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Whatever we need to discuss, we're gonna do it during the trial. Without even looking directly at Kyoko, Byakuya stepped into the elevator. <laughs> Master, wait for me. Uh, um... Good call. Who knows what might happen to us if we take too long. But... I'll be happy when this class trial is over. One after another, everyone piled into the elevator. But I... I couldn't help myself. I had to talk to Kyoko before the trial started. Yes, we have to talk to Kyoko. Listen, before you get started, I have to ask you. Where have you been this whole time? You used that key of yours to go somewhere, didn't you? Correct. So, I went to investigate the second floor of the dorms. The second floor? That's right. They aren't... There aren't any monitors or cameras there, so I went to avoid Monokuma completely. Of course. I also missed his announcement because of that. Whew. I had no idea that the body had been discovered. Then... When did you find out? So... Just now. I finished my search and came back down just in time to hear the class trial announcement. I took some time to go over the crime scene first, and I can't go to a trial completely uninformed, can I? So that's why you were late. However... I'm sorry I kept you all waiting. But if you're on the second floor of the dorms, then that's what the key you found was goes wrong. to. Actually, to be precise, not quite. In other words... It's, I used Monokuma's secret tool, which can open any lock in the school. What? Kyoko's account has been added to the truth bullet section. Oh, we got 19. Second. Hey, what are you two doing? Hurry up before we get in trouble with Monokuma. Makoto. We can go over the details after we get through the trial, okay, Makoto? Right now, I just want to focus on surviving with our current situation. Because this is probably the single most crucial moment so far for me. For her. That's a strange way to put it. The class trial is important for everyone, right? So why would it she say it's a crucial moment for her? Goodbye. Well... If that's all. Seemingly unconcerned, Kiyoko made her way to the elevator. I'm just overthinking what she said, right? Are you, though? Being the last one, I stepped into the elevator. And the door slid shut. There is literally six students. This time, the clucking lo was loud enough to hurt my ears. The dread began to consume one me once again. I can't even imagine ever getting used to the metal pr mental pressure that comes with preparing for an execution. In that dusky darkness, nobody said a word. We just stood there, silent and still. After an immeasurable period of time, the doors opened without warning. A dazzling light penetrated every depth of my eyes. It, but it, was, it wasn't the illuminating light of hope. It was the blinding light of despair. Oh, I don't like this trial area. Okay, this is like really pink. Hello. Um, okay, well, I do like it, but like I was not expecting pink up the wazoo. Hi, Monokuma. Ah, oh, I've been waiting for this. I feel like I've been forever since I've, we get together like this. The tie is a pointless jokes and jabs and pass pass. Let's get chill. on with the show. Mm. And so the curtain opened for a fifth time. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, and a deadly fate. A deadly class trial. Save, of course. We're in pre-trial prep time. Yes, we overwrite the save. I don't think we have one that costs one, so we're just going to go in with what we got. Oh boy. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, if you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one... Then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay, well, I'll leave the rest up to you. Well then, let's discuss the specifics of the victim. First, we need to clarify who exactly the unidentified victim is. 
It's Kyoko. There's no other explanation. Hero, way to start this class trial off with a banger. But Kyoko's standing right there. Thank you, Toko. No, that's a ghost. But she has legs and stuff. Well, that's just because she's like the latest evolution in ghost technology. There's a limit to how much ridiculousness I can tolerate. Thanks, Biaka. Biakia. Moving on. Um, okay. So I just have to prove that the corpse isn't Kyoko, right? Then let's compare Kyoko's traits to the traits of the dead body. Her traits? One important trait Kyoko has that proves the body doesn't belong to her. I got it! I'm talking about her gloves. They'll give us some insight into the mystery. I'm sure of it. In that case, I think it would be helpful if someone explained why she actually wears those gloves. And would you happen to know the answer? In fact, Monokuma told me. Apparently, you have scars on your hands you don't want anyone to see. Oh, you know, now that I think about it, the corpse wasn't wearing any gloves, right? They probably just got burnt up in the explosion. Mm -mm. I'm not convinced. The ghost is just trying to fool us all. Jesus, hero. Hero, you can just shut your mouth right now and it would progress the trials so much faster. There's no way the corpse was Kyoko. But if I can't prove why, we're going to be stuck here. The case won't move forward. I don't think I have a choice but to. Oh my god, we have to literally prove it. We have to prove it because the hero is so stupid that he can't figure it out. Got it. That Kyoko there is just a ghost. Impossible. Okay, then prove it. Prove she's not a ghost. The dead body wasn't wearing gloves. They got burnt up in the explosion. Then she was wearing gloves before the explosion? Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Because that corpse is absolutely joking. Uh, this entire discussion is idiotic. Thanks, Biak. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know which one I'm going to shoot that, here. Yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Cause that corpse oh my gosh, is I keep hitting wrong buttons. Uh, <laughs> wrong button alert. <laughs> I hit that. Kyoko I want to hit that just button. A ghost. Yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. There. Oh. I was still wrong. Okay. Shoot. The explosion. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Oh, that counted. Cause uh. that corpse is. Well, yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. Hmm. Shoot. Yeah, she must have been wearing gloves. No, that's wrong. I knew it was that sentence. It was just the way, the how to break it. No, there's no way the corpse was wearing gloves. Whoever it was, they were wearing fake nails, remember? I imagine trying to wear gloves over nails like that would have been a pretty big pain. Besides, Kyoko wears gloves to hide her hands, right? It'd be pretty weird for someone who's self-conscious about their hands to wear fake nails, don't you think? Jeez, man, you don't know women, huh? They're complicated like that. Oh my god, hero. You and your horrific explanation that don't deserve it. Like, what the heck? Also, love how my power literally went out. Because he... Or my power didn't go out, but, like, my, all my lights went out. Because Hero's stupidity is so green. The lights didn't want to... The lights didn't want to continue with how dumb his statement was. Like, excuse me? If anyone doesn't know women, it's you. Facts, Hina. Well, Kyoko, any thoughts? These gloves were custom made to the size of my hands to make sure they don't interfere with my daily life. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko. Which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Okay, so then, who's the real victim? First, we need to figure that out. That's the first thing I said. You're the one who's been dragging us around in circles.
before anything, we have to identify the victim. Everything starts here. Okay. Fragments of the dead body, the sprinklers, the... Okay, we got the same... For, except for the fragments. If Kyoko really is still alive, then who died? There's got to be some way to figure it out. I don't think so. The face was scorched beyond recognition. And there wasn't any description in the Monokuma file. Well, if we can't identify the body... Then there's nothing else we can do, right? We need to find the victim, but before we can do anything else... We can't identify the body... Shoot! I am really struggling on this. What the heck? There's nothing else we can do, right? The body was not scorched, but because the if hand Yoko is still there. Really is st then who died? Beyond recognition. Uh. Shoot. Can't identify the body. There we go. No, that's wrong. You can't. There was the other one clue left behind that we can use to identify the body. What? For real? If you're lying, you'll die a cruel and unusual death. Cruel and unusual death? This I gotta see. She's just being stupid. Ignore them, Makoto. Tell us what you're talking about. The key to figuring out who it was is the tattoo on the back of her hand. Oh, yeah. The design's pretty strange, huh? Is this a dog? Her master must have made her get it to be like, you're my bitch. She really? wishes. They really did something that humiliating? No, that's not it. The identity of the victim is hidden within that tattoo. Oh, really? If you compare the tattoo to the other information we have, the victim's identity should become clear. I got it! The Fenrir Mercenary Corps. That's the name of the military group Mukuro Ikusaba belonged to. Okay, so... To show that they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad would get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. Fenrir? The image that represents Fenrir, Fenrir is... The Wolf of Ragnarok. Is it going to make me type? Oh, it's literally just going to say wolf. Okay. Good. Cool. I don't have to remember how to spell Ragnarok. I'm actually kind of totally co I'm totally kosher with that. Now I understand. The representation of Fenrir is a wolf. Fenrir. The Wolf of Ragnarok. It's from Norse mythology. A huge, world-ending wolf beast. He's the child of the trickster god, Loki. And a female giant. Man, after all this time, we finally got a glimpse of the literary all-star. <laughs> tattoo. Then that means... Exactly. The body we found had a tattoo of a wolf. Which means that person must have once belonged to Fenrir. So it must have been Mukuro. What? Uh, hold on. Isn't she the one that was behind this whole thing? <laughs> you sound surprised, but you're absolutely right. Yes, indeed. The trial this time is to solve the murder of Mukuro Ikusaba. What? Are you saying the mastermind is dead? And now we have to have a cool ass trial? No. It means we were wrong in thinking that Mukuro was the mastermind at all. But I mean, being the ultimate despair seems like a pretty mastermindy title to me. Maybe we shouldn't have been thinking of her as the ultimate despair in the first place. After all, looking at her profile, I didn't see anything that would fit such a description. All it said was that she was the ultimate soldier. If I remember correctly, that other information came from Kyoko. That's what you told Makoto, right? 
So that means Kyoko got it wrong? <laughs> who was she? Who was Mukuro Ikusaba? She's been gone this whole time. And when she finally turns up, she gets killed. Usually when there's a scene where an important character dies, it has a lot more detail. So you're saying she wasn't an important character? Which would mean she was the same as us. Just another participant. Then who's the real mastermind? It must have been the Hope's Peak Academy headmaster after all. No, the headmaster has nothing to do with it. But how can we trust that? We already know your information about Mukuro was wrong. My information was not wrong. Okay, okay! We're in the middle of a trial right now! Figuring out who killed <laughs> Mukuro is first oh, and foremost! No. Please limit all future prattle, chatter, and chit-chat as much as possible! No, Fine. no, no. Uncovering the identity of the Mastermind will have to wait. But remember this. No matter what happens, we will find out who you really are. I stake my family name on it. I have officially decided to completely ignore all such attempts at provocation. Now then, just so nobody's confused. I'm really glad I have this let on. Let me state this one more time for the record. The reason we're having a class trial is because a murder among the students has taken place. Hammer that point straight into your big old brains. Monica was so not happy that we're literally going off of topic. He is pissed. He is pissed. He is like, y'all are getting off topic. I, I need to stop this right now. Oh my god, Monica, we love you. This is, you are amazing. What you're saying is that both the victim and the culprit are part of the student body? Then one of us killed Mukuro? Wait, no. There's a chance that there's some mystery 17th person who's been hiding all along. A hero, just shut up. Nope. There are only 16 students in total that have been taking part in these events. Seriously? Then one of us killed Mukuro? Who did it? Who's the killer this time? Get a hold of yourself. We've already narrowed down the list of possible suspects. Huh? I'm sure you realize who I'm talking about, right, Makoto? Who the evidence points to? Besides on what, but based on what we know, there's only two suspects. I got it. You've narrowed it down to Kyoko and me, right? Why do you say that? Allow me to explain. Just after nighttime last night, I went to the garden so I can confirm that at that point, there was no dead body there. So, the murder must have taken place after I left the garden. However, Hiro, Toko, Hina, and I were in the gym the entire time. The gym? That's right. The four of us were there trying to dismantle Monokuma. The whole time, we were very careful not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. All of which is to say, the four of us all have alibis. The only ones without alibis are me and Makoto. That's why you're able to narrow down the list of suspects. Exactly so. The only suspects now are me and Kyoko. Damn it, I can't let this stand. Somehow I have to clear um, my name. I have something I'd like to say regarding the whole alibi thing. Are you thinking of raising an objection? Well, before that, I just want to try and get a better idea of what time the murder took place. Doing that might reveal some kind of clue. Whatever you want, somebody go ahead and help him out. Me and Byakuya can both confirm that the body wasn't in the garden at... Well, it was after nighttime for sure. I'd say it must have been around 10 o'clock. So the murder must have happened after 10 p.m. Then I guess we can say the time frame for the murder was between then and when we found the body? Oh, but... What time did we find the body? 9 a.m. The one who saw the body first was Toko, right? And she went to go get the pickaxe. What time was the body? 9. I got it! The body must have been discovered at 9 a.m. Since that's when Toko went to get the pickaxe. Now then, Toko, what time is it? Well, well, well. When we left the gym, it was just, just, just before 9 o'clock. So it's probably 9 on the dot now. Okay, then get the pickaxe and be here at 9 on 1. He's right. 
It had to be around then. So we can be totally sure the murder happened sometime between 10 at night and 9 in the morning. I think we can be more specific For than me, that. I was already asleep before nighttime hit, so I don't have an alibi after 10 o'clock. But I'm sure I met up with everyone else before 9 this morning. We ran into each other in the dining hall, right? Oh, yeah. Right around 7.30. I... Which means from 10 p.m. to 7.30 a.m., you don't have an alibi. The murder happened between 10 and 9, and I don't have an alibi between 10 and 7.30. Okay, then. It looks like the game has begun. I can't provide an alibi for that period. Then I'll have to prove the murder didn't happen during that time, I, the time I don't have an alibi. The sprinklers! <laughs> We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and 9 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and Makoto doesn't have an alibi for most of that time. Yeah, from 10 o'clock to 7.30. Oh, wait. Time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between 10 o'clock at night and nine Why is it not morning. working? Yep. What? Yeah, Am I barely missing? Why do I feel like I'm barely missing? Any objections now would be the We've established a time frame for the murder. It took place somewhere between ten o'clock at night. No, that's wrong. Actually, the murder couldn't have happened anywhere near ten o'clock. It had to have taken place way later. And what makes you say that? Because of the sprinklers in the garden. The sprinklers are set to go off right at 7.30 every morning, right? So if the body had been in the garden before 7.30, then it should have been completely soaked. Oh, hold on. I remember this part perfectly. The body was wet. Dripping wet, in fact. Sorry, Toko, but you're wrong. I'm wrong? Uh, how? Are you saying only the mouth down south was wet? How dare you spew such indecent words! No, I'm saying that the body was wet, but not because of the sprinklers. What do you mean? By denying the sprinkler, are you trying to deny my entire existence? Man. You're totally wacko. You are you too. You really think it wasn't the sprinkler? You better tell us why. I need to prove that it wasn't the sprinklers that got the body wet. All I have to do is hit Toko with certain evidence that should be, or that should do it. Moment of truth with Toko again. Interesting. I admit nothing. I hate you. No, no, no! I don't know anything. Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing. I hate you. No, no, no! I don't know anything! Hold on! Are you trying to blame me? I admit nothing. Are you trying to blame me? How can you say it wasn't the sprinkler? This should prove it. Just remember what the body was like after the explosion, and you'll see why it wasn't the sprinklers. The top half of the body was wet, yes, but the bottom half was completely dry. If the sprinklers got the body wet, shouldn't the whole body have been wet? So they only got the top wet? The bottom was completely dry? What a brutal maniac! I'm so sick of her. Let's just move on. The reason only the top half was wet was because... While the body was still on fire, I doused it with water. But only the part on fire, the top half. Oh, then I guess the sprinklers really didn't do it. So if the sprinklers didn't get the body wet, then the murder must have taken place sometime after the sprinklers turned on at 7.30 in the morning. 
which means she must have been killed sometime between then and when the body was discovered at 9. But Makoto's alibi was only missing from 10 o'clock last night to 7.30 this morning, right? So there's no way Makoto could have done it. I guess you had an alibi after all. Good for you. In which case, the only one left without an alibi is Kyoko. Kyoko is the only one left without an alibi, which could mean that Murkuro, this killer, is... No, I refuse to believe it. Kyoko murdered someone. That's... I'd just like to say one thing. If you vote for me and I die here, the mystery of this school will stay hidden forever. Which is why I can't let that happen. Huh? So are you saying you're not the culprit? Of course I'm not. I have no reason to kill anyone. This is a trap the mastermind has laid for us. A trap? <laughs> We're this far into the game and now? you decide to blame me stop wasting time stop wasting energy you really think your little trick is gonna work shut up you you got it boss shutting up now anyway kyoko you actually did have a reason to kill her huh she did she thought mukuro was the ultimate despair in other words the mastermind behind everything so she killed her to try and put a stop to all this isn't that right, Kyoko? But you made one catastrophic mistake. Mukuro wasn't the mastermind at all. And as a result, we were forced into another trial. Something I'm sure you weren't at all expecting. So, that was her motive? If she had a motive, and no alibi, well then... I think it's pretty clear Kyoko's gotta be the culprit. I'm not the only one without an alibi. Makoto's explanation is still insufficient. Huh? The sprinklers didn't get the body wet, but that doesn't mean the murder happened when he said it did. What are you... Because you see, there is a way the body could have avoided getting wet. Interesting. I'm listening. All it would take is covering the body with a certain something to keep it from getting wet. The tarp. I got it! You're talking about the tarp, aren't you? You catch on quick. You're right. All you'd have to do is cover the body with the tarp, and that'd take care of the water. In fact, that's exactly what the killer did. The dirt pattern on the tarp can attest to that. Only one side of the tarp got dirty, because that's the side that got covered in water. The side that faced down over the body, meanwhile, kept perfectly clean. This proves that the killer used the tarp to keep the body from getting soaked. But why would they go to all that effort just to keep the body from getting wet? Most likely so they could cloud the issue of when the murder actually took place. In other words, to create an excuse exactly like the one Makoto just gave us. She is targeting us. Why would she make me look like the killer? No, I can't think of that right now. The tarp. It was used in the way Kyoko said. The tarp must have touched the body, right? But the body. Wait. Something's and not right. What might that be? I can't worry about Kyoko's motivations, but if I don't do something, everyone's gonna think I'm the killer. And I refuse, I have to repeat what Kyoko said. By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevented it from getting wet. So the reason the tarp was only dirty on one side is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. Shoot. By covering the body with the tarp, the killer prevented it from getting wet. Exploded body. So the reason near. the tarp was only dirty on one side 
is because the sprinkler got that side wet. But the underside of the tarp, it was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. Protected from the water. Since it was facing down toward the body, of course it didn't get dirty. No, okay. It was totally spotless, right? It's because that side was protected from the water. Mm. Shoot! Where am I going wrong here? I'm definitely By going wrong somewhere. The body with it didn't get dirty! The water! Shoot! By covering the, bo the body, of course it didn't get dirty! Protected from the water! Well, we will be right back. Um, wow, that was rough. I shouldn't be struggling this hard. But we will continue to uh, end up continuing things in the next episode to keep you guys a little bit more in check and locked up because uh, I'm mean. Um, is, but <laughs> Is this really the end for all of us? Wait. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Love y'all. Bye.